This is Mrs. Alexander, and these are your 2.21 front load notes over macromolecules. The four macromolecules covered in this presentation are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. In class, we're going to test the different carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins and find them in our food. We call them organic because they come from life or they have carbon built into them. Um, those kind of things are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Again, here are pictures of them. So I have bread for carbohydrates, uh, steak for protein, oil for fat, aka lipids, and a vial of blood because vial of blood has DNA in it. And DNA is a nucleic acid. The other DNA that we haven't covered in the class yet is RNA. The first one we're going to talk about and we're going to test in our food are going to be carbohydrates. We refer to carbohydrates as glucose in this class. We've learned about it with diabetes. They consist of these three major atoms, and you need to know them, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They occur always in the proportion of one to two to one. One carbon for every two hydrogen. One oxygen for every two hydrogen. Um, and carbohydrates are the body's key source of energy. When glucose, aka a carbohydrate, can't get in the cell, then you feel tired and hungry all the time. We learned about that with diabetes. You can find carbohydrates in things like grain and starches, you can also find them in fruit, vegetables, and not all carbs are created equally. In class, we'll learn about simple and complex carbs and how they feed your body differently. You will need to know the building block of each one of these macromolecules. A building block, think of a Lego block, builds a bigger structure. And so a carbohydrate is built of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those building blocks we call a monosaccharide. Mono for one, saccharide for a little sack of sugar. So single sugars are built of one monosaccharide. When you put two sugars together, we call those disaccharides, di for two. So the picture below shows two monosaccharides connected together with bonds to form a disaccharide. Sugars that you eat in your food, things like table sugar or Splenda or sugars that you hear about in commercials like high fructose corn syrup, all different sugars have different names depending on what they're made of. For example, a common disaccharide, that's two monosaccharides put together, is called sucrose. Sucrose is a really sweet tasting sugar we flavor a lot of our beverages with. It's made of the monosaccharide glucose and the monosaccharide fructose. So two monosaccharides form sucrose, a disaccharide. Then if you put more than two together, three or more, long chains of carbohydrates like starches and breads. Those are called poly, poly meaning many, not poly meaning three, it means many, so three or more. Many saccharides. So notice the picture below is a long chain of monosaccharides called a polysaccharide. In the right hand corner I show you a symbol for carbohydrate. That symbol has a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Remember, that's kind of what they look like. They're usually five-sided shape. I know that my picture is more than five sides, but that's just to kind of help you what they look, know what they look like. This brings us to lipids. Lipids are fats, okay? And lipids are a good thing for our body because not just making us fat and overweight, but they make up lots of different structures in our body. For example, our skin is made of lipids. Um, different oils that are on our skins to help protect us are lipids. And what allows lipids to protect us, for example, if you pour water on your skin, it usually beads up and drips off. That is because of the nonpolar molecule. Nonpolar. I want you to know, not soluble in water. We're not dissolvable in water. It does not like water. Nonpolar, not water. That's why those two big words are bolded, underlined, so that you can get from this slide the main important message. So lipids will not dissolve in water. You put fat with water, it doesn't dissolve. Now if you put fat in another fat, then they do dissolve because lipids like to dissolve with other lipids. So other words for lipids, for example, in carbohydrates we talked about monosaccharide, disaccharide. In lipids we have things called fats, phospholipids, steroids, and waxes. Those are all different names for different types of lipids. Lipids store energy. So our body will tap into our lipids or our fat sources whenever we need to have more energy in the cell. For example, whenever you have diabetes and you're not using your glucose, it turns to your fat or your lipids. Typically, a fat looks like a head with a tail or a circular molecule that we call glycerol with a fatty acid tail that we call a backbone. 
Pictured here in this slide, the bottom right hand corner, the three red dots are like the heads and the backbones or the tails are the fatty acids. Um, also pictured above this is the molecular form. Be aware of what it looks like molecularly. Again, this is built up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So that's something that sugars and fats have in common. They're built up of three atoms, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and you need to know those for the test and know that that's how your body uses them for energy, by breaking those bonds. There are two types of fats we need to talk about. They're saturated and unsaturated. You'll find this on the back of a food label, and usually people just look them over and think they're fat. Well, one of the fats is better for your body than the other. In a saturated fatty acid, all the tails in this picture are nice and straight, and that allows them to stack on top of each other and build thick fats. These are the kind of fats that our body doesn't really want because they need too fat in your body and a buildup in your arteries that clog up. Think of saturated equals solid hard fat. So the S for saturated is the S for solid. And this is because they are all bonded by two hydrogen atoms. So look at all the C's in the middle of the chain. There's an H above it and an H below it. This is what causes all the tails to be nice and hard. So think saturated is solid. These type of fats, when you sit them at room temperature, like a stick of butter, the, the butter doesn't melt. It just stays there and it's hard, like pictured in the picture. Think of that happening inside of your arteries. It hardens. That brings us back to unsaturated, the second type of lipid. Unsaturated fats tend to come from plants instead of animals, which is why they're better for our body, um, because they do not become solid at room temperature. They are what I like to call our slippery fats because they're liquid, like extra virgin olive oil. You hear that on the news all the time or on uh, different um, commercials about how it's so much healthier to use in your cooking. The reason is because the molecule is actually kinked. And if you look at those tails, instead of being straight and firm and stackable like they were in the last picture, they have kinks. The kinks correspond with that molecular picture. Notice that instead of some of the C's, Instead of having an H above it, they have a double bond between them, and they're missing H's, and that's where the kinks come in the molecules. So, a little way to remember it is that unsaturated or unsolid, there are kinky or slippery fats. Things like motor oil that lubricates uh, machinery, it's slippery, it allows that to go through. When you eat unsaturated fats in your body, it lubricates your insides and it helps with your digestion and whatnot, and it's something that we need in our bodies. This brings us to our third macromolecule, proteins. Previously, we've talked about carbohydrates and lipids, which both consist of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and now we're going to bring us to proteins. Proteins consist of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. A protein is a large molecule formed by little smaller molecules called amino acids. So the building block of a protein are amino acids, and they look like just circular structures. Um, there are only 20 amino acids in our world as we know it right now, and those amino acids come from different foods. For example, beans, chicken, fish, or something as simple as spinach. Those all have different protein in them, and they're not all created equally. They're different amino acids. You probably know the word amino acid because people talk about drinking amino acid shakes or taking pills to help with that with working out, and that's where we get the word amino acid from in our daily life. Besides just building muscle for our body, which is what most people know amino acids are for, we need amino acids or proteins to help with our body functions and form enzymes. We learned about enzymes or proteins with diabetes, GLUT4 transporters or insulin receptors. Any kind of protein embedded in the cell membrane is an enzyme or a channel or part of a protein. Enzymes help our body do things faster and get re chemical reactions done quicker. Some other proteins that are important are structural proteins. These are things in our body that produce structure, like our muscles. We also have collagen, which is elasticity in your skin, and your hair. Your hair has protein in it as well. Other animals, such as deer, they have horns, and those horns are made of proteins. You kind of are familiar with how proteins are building our bodies. Another function of protein, which is very important, is they help your body defend against infections, aka your white blood cells. Um, also in your blood, the main name we give blood is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the name for blood. It is the protein in the blood that carries oxygen from your lungs to your body tissues. Without hemoglobin, um, you wouldn't be able to breathe and be very healthy at all. 
there are a bunch of different diseases that go on with your proteins not being um, correctly built in your body. And if you are even missing just one of these 20, for example, there are 20 different colored beads is what they look like, and it looks like they're all folded up in this big glob. If your body forgets how to make one of these or you don't eat it in your diet, you can have a disease and you can die. And so proteins are really, really important because they help you sustain life. A protein acts as a lock and a key, just like the insulin receptors or the glute fours, because a protein has a special three-dimensional shape, like a Lego piece. And so that's what this picture demonstrates. Previously in the presentation, I believe I said that protein consists of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and I said nitrogen, or phosphorus instead. It's really nitrogen, excuse my mistake. But nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen all arrange themselves in this form that looks a little bit something like this. Um, you are going to need to be able to identify on the test that protein is made up of. There's a carboxyl group, an amino group, a hydrogen bond, and a variable group. We have an activity that we're going to go over that and just understand that C, H, O, and N, those are the atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, that are found in protein. So here's the image you're going to see on the test for what a protein looks like if I show you molecularly. Notice in green is the amino acid group because it has the nitrogen. The R is the variable group, meaning that if it's chicken versus beef versus spinach, that variable group, that side chain, that R, will be different. And then on the right-hand side, the carboxyl group is the, the side of the molecule that has the carbon. That brings us to nucleic acid. Nucleic acid can be found in any food that has DNA. For example, a chicken, they have their own DNA. When you eat the meat from the chicken, you're eating its DNA. Weird, right? Same thing for the spinach. The spinach was once a, a living plant that did photosynthesis and exchanged gas with the environment, lived and responded to its environment. When you ate that spinach, you ate its DNA. I um, just want to briefly go over nucleic acids. We've just called it DNA up to this point. A sugar, a phosphate, a base are the building blocks or components. We call those three things together the nucleotide. A nucleotide is the building block. It's like the Lego piece that builds up your DNA, your double helix that gives you your genetic code, gives you heredity, which is how you're linked to your past ancestors and how you're unique from every other individual in the world. RNA, we haven't covered yet in class. RNA is a how your body makes a copy of your DNA so it can produce more. It's a single strand instead of a double strand. Um, and then in, more importantly, is that your body needs to be able to assemble and disassemble, so break apart and form together these different macromolecules. For example, when you eat bread, you need to break the bread apart into the carbohydrates. When you eat something like pizza and it's got pepperoni and cheese and bread, your body has to break apart those di different macromolecules. For example, the meat from the pepperoni, the lipids in the cheese, and even the bread that's part of the crust. So it uses ATP, adenosine triphosphate, in order to do this. Adenosine triphosphate is what stores the energy from your food and when you break off one of those phosphates, so one of those three red bonds right there, and you break it, that breaking motion releases the energy into your cells that it needs. It te stores it temporarily, so I want you to think ATP means temporary energy storage. Kind of like whenever you make money at your job and they give you a dollar bill or how much ever you make, that dollar bill isn't energy. That dollar bill doesn't actually mean that you're rich. That dollar bill is a placeholder temporarily holding on to the amount of money you've made, just like your bank account does the same thing. ATP is like one of those molecules. For further resources, for further sites on the macromolecules of life, I would like you guys to stop right now and watch the 7 Minute Amoeba Sisters clip right here for me. Um, it's a great video that goes over C-H-O-N-P. And so go back to nucleic acid. It has carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and now this is where the phosphate comes in. And so the amoeba sisters are going to go over this cute little reference that says Cho, Cho, Chon, Chomp. Cho and Cho, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, are found in carbs and lipids. Cho, Cho, Chon, C-H-O-N, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, are found in proteins. And then you got Chomp, C-H-O-N-P. That's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Nitrogen, phosphorus is found in nucleic acids. So if that didn't make sense, again, go to the Neva Sisters clip and watch it.